I'm Jura, the time traveler, and this is my lifestyle time travel blog. And today we are talking about the oldest temples in the world. Where is the cradle of civilization? Well, if we are talking about the first permanent settlements and the first human attempts to change the nature, that is in the Fertile Crescent, in the Near East. Because that is the location where animals and plants were domesticated and where we have those real settlements together with temples. So it seems like the people started building real homes, real houses and temples at the same time and that is during the 10th and 9th millennia BC. So today we are going to talk about Gobekli Tepe, Karakhan Tepe, Saiburt and Yerfal Ahmar. In these settlements we have both public and domestic buildings, which means that all the areas of life were included, so practical and symbolic. Based on these public buildings we know that there were communal projects and communal projects you cannot have without a community. So they had real social organization, they had labor division and probably someone to organize them in some way, sort or form. And they were filled with symbolic, so they were probably a central stage for some rituals and for some activities, manifestations or some performances. And these buildings are so magnificent, they are so well preserved, they are so well built and they are true wonders of ancient engineering. And that is why they are in center of numerous conspiracy theories. Which is in one hand understandable, in the other hand completely wrong. Let's start with Gobekli Tepe, the settlement in the Shanli Urfa region. This settlement was established some 9500 years BC and it lived until the 8000 years BC. And it is the most famous for its spectacular temples. At first, when this settlement was discovered in 1995, it was thought that it was only a religious center, that only temples existed here. Because there were no domestic houses, there were no domesticated cereals or domesticated animals, and there was no permanent water source. And it was interpreted as this religious center for hunter-gatherer communities that lived in the nearby areas. It was thought that from time to time these communities gathered here and that they built and used these temples for hundreds of years. Lately some new discoveries changed this picture completely. Now domestic houses were found and inside them we have hearts, we have bone tools, we have evidence for stone and bone bead production and we do know that they harvested and prepared meals from wild cereals and we do know that they hunted gazelle, oryxes and they probably also made alcoholic beverages. And we have containers that they used for drinking and that is thin walled stone vessels. And for collecting water we now have one interesting context that probably could have been a cistern or reservoir for collecting rainwater. It is a pit 2.8 meters deep dug into the bedrock and lined with stone slabs. Maybe they didn't drink alcohol every single day but during some feasts or some ritual ceremonies. But where did they perform those ritual ceremonies? Well, at the temples. So up until now five circular temples were found that can be dated back to 9.5 thousand years BC. And inside these temples we have monumental T-shaped limestone pillars that are up to 5.5 meters high. And these pillars have images of different wild animals like oryx, wild boar, vultures, other birds, snakes, foxes and also schematic representations of humans. And the biggest pillars were at the center of this temple and the two central pillars were the tallest because of the roof. The walls of these temples were made from stone and these round temples were used time and time again for some 800 years so until 8.7 thousand years BC. Now we are moving on to a new site, the site that was newly discovered, which is Karahantepe, and it is dated back to 9.4 thousand years BC. 
Here we also have a mix of residential and public buildings, but also a quarry, because this site was on a limestone plateau, just like the Quebec Litepes. But there are two extremely interesting and completely different public buildings, and they are named structures AD, AB and AA. So the structure AD is the biggest one and it resembles the temples from Gobekli Tepe. It is partially carved into the bedrock and it also has walls made from stone. We also have T-shaped limestone pillars that are extremely huge and some of them were reused as benches. So along the walls we have benches, we also have niches, we have decorations. Leopard is a prominent image at this temple and this temple was connected to the second structure, which is called AB. It is connected through a small portal and then when you pass that portal, you go into a completely different setting. This structure was carved into the bedrock and they have five steps that lead into this structure and four steps at the opposite end that lead outside of this structure. So like an entrance and an exit. And inside this structure, we have 11 phallic pillars that were also carved from the bedrock. But the most prominent part of this structure is the human face that is located on the ridge of this structure. And this head is also carved from the bedrock. And the last structure in line is the structure AA. It is also dug from the bedrock and it is the shallowest. It has a bench that goes along one wall and it is decorated with an encarved snake that ends in a fox that is next to steps that lead out of this structure. And in this structure, we also have a deep pit. So all of these structures were connected in some way and they probably were used during some rituals. But who could access which structure and at which point of the ritual, we do not know. And now we have one site in northern Syria, and that is Yerf el Ahmar. It was occupied between 9.2 to 8.7 thousand years BC. It is now under the Lake Assad and it was excavated during the 90s. This was also a regular settlement with domestic and public buildings. And we have two amazing public buildings. They were both subterranean and they're from two different periods. The older one was divided into six cells with a clear central part of this building. It had stone retaining walls and 10 wooden pillars that supported the roof. We also, of course, have benches. And before this temple was buried, a headless man was placed at the center of this building. This building was probably multifunctional. It served as a collective storage facility, but also for some rituals and meetings. The younger communal building was a bit different. It was not divided into cells. It was also subterranean with stone retaining wall and some 30 wooden posts embedded in this wall. But it was not divided into any cells. It only had one bench that went along this wall and it was made from stone slabs and it was decorated in triangles. So the function of this building was probably for some rituals, meetings and performances, but not for storage. Another recent find comes from the site of Sayaburt in southeastern Turkey. Only a part of a communal building has been excavated at this site because the rest is under the modern houses. But we do know that this was a round communal building with benches. It had the stone retaining walls and probably a T-stone shaped pillars which haven't been found so far. But what is interesting is that from the bench that was found comes the oldest narrative carving in the world. We have one story that is depicted in five different figures. We have two human figures and three animal figures. So one male figure is carved in a high relief and he is facing the room and he's also wearing a collar like the Urfa man and he's holding his pulse. And on both sides he's faced by two leopards that are pretty angry, they're baring their teeth, they have raised 
tails and the one is male and other is female. And the other scene features a man that is squatting with his back turned to a leopard. He has one raised hand with six fingers and in the other hand he has a rattle or a snake. And he is facing an oryx. These animals look exactly like the ones that are found at the Gobekli Tepe. So all of these depictions that are in low relief are actually in profile and they are probably telling one story. But we do not know what the story was, whether it was a myth or a legend. Thank you for watching this video and write down in comments which temple was your favorite. Mine is probably the one with the head at Karahan Tepe. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do that now and also like, share, comment, send to all and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! Thank mm -hmm. you.